Note 3, Nova 3, uh, all and Max Lumi all come with the now, uh, yeah, a little bit old pen. It works, but for the price range, and I've said it many times, and yeah, I, I really don't understand why the new range didn't offer a refreshed pen, uh, which was better quality and yeah, just a little bit better overall. Because, uh, and some of the people ask like, okay, so what is the problem with it? Well, the problem is the build quality itself. It's built out of very kind of cheap plasticky material, which is very bendy and it's uncomfortable to use for a longer periods of time because it bends and flex is flexes in your uh, hand. The nibs themselves I actually quite like. However, the second part of the problem with the uh, this default pen is the fact that the pressure sensitivity, even though it's there, it's not that sensitive. So you don't have that much control. And I only realized when I started using, uh, for example, uh, Lamy pen, um, it's far better calibrated and we started actually checking out other pens uh, other third-party pens then I noticed just how big of a difference it is in the calibration of the pressure sensitivity so those are my main issues the build quality it's uncomfortable to actually use for a prolonged period of time and the pressure sensitivity is not um, not make you making use of the device what the device is actually capable of uh, giving you so yeah I, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity if you're refreshing the entire line it was a perfect opportunity to actually make this uh, yeah with a new pen but yeah this is what you get so that's it and in my opinion it's not good enough uh, for the asking price and I think I had the same uh, comment for note 2 and Nova 2 I, I just it's not something that I like now, as far as everything else goes, I am not going to do the guide here, same as I didn't do it in um, Note Air either, mainly because uh, I am preparing a big books guide series, which is going to help you dive in and unlock and do all of these things that you actually need to do. And also, I've covered so many things on the Max Lumi review and a little bit more on the Note Air review. There's really nothing new that I can cover as far as the books platform itself and the OS3 goes um, on the Note 3 or Nova 3 or the Poke 3. So everything is the same here. You have the new features that you have are the screencast. Uh, Note 3 does not have the gyroscope, so rotation, there's no auto rotation, but it does have the split screen and you have the ability to enable Google Play Store if you choose to do so. You can install different apps you have the Neo browser, you have the new calendar memo, you have also the push read which is a bit better than the push ability that you had on transfer books because the push read actually transfers the entire document including the media of it. So all of these things will be covered in the big books guide. Um, so that's basically uh, I'm not gonna mix the two because I'm just gonna be duplicating the same information all over the place and I really don't want to do that. So if you're interested in how to get around and how to do these basic things, um, how to, uh, what are the capabilities of the Neo Reader, the default reader, what are the capabilities of the notes, and all of these kinds of things, everything is covered in the Max Lumi review. So you can get all of the info there and it will work exactly the same on the Note 3 and every other of the book's devices. Now, the thing that I do want to test out with the Note 3 is the transfer speeds and basically how quickly can it access big files and how it actually functions. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to test this uh, compared to the Note Air because Note Air has the same system as Note 2 and everyone else. So it's a good benchmark there. So um, I'm just going to plug this guy in. And on my PC, I have a prepared uh, folder that I usually transfer and test out for the f for the reader devices that I use and basically it's 1.13 gigabytes and I have ranging from 800 megabyte PDF file a very large one all the way down to smaller ones so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this directly onto the note 3 which again when you plug it in it's just like a normal Android device so it simply transfers here so I'm just gonna make a new uh, the folder here and name it uh, transfer test 
and I'm just gonna drag and drop everything in there and then we'll time that and compare then we'll do the same thing with the note air and then we'll compare the time done and everything is as you've seen is being automatically updated here so they are doubled because i already have them but you could see just how quick this whole thing is it's like is immediately as soon as you copied everything was refreshed and the last thing i'm going to do also is i'm going to copy uh, one of the files one of the pdfs that i know has a gigantic image and i'm going to compare how quickly each of the devices actually loads that image because that's uh should be a direct uh, comparison of the read speed. All right, so now I'm on Note Air. I made the transfer test folder and I'm just gonna copy the same exact files over to the Note Air so that we can compare the transfer speeds and if there's a difference, noticeable difference uh, between the Note 3 and the Note Air as far as these things go. All right, so now let's compare these two guys and how they flip over and how they open these documents. All right, so I've cleared out the memory on both of them, so they are squeaky clean. And um, yeah, they're not, they, the document hasn't been loaded on either of them, so I'm just gonna be loading, uh, where is it? I think it's a little bit out here. Should be called Hercules DJ Control Start. Oh, there we go. So these two i'm just gonna start at the same time and they should open up at the front page which is the heavy one so let's see who opens up the fa uh, fastest three two one go right and they're taking quite a long time because that front image is of a huge resolution and that's why i tested but they opened up fairly identically and the navigation seems pretty much spot on. We're going now back to that front image. So it's loading it up again, a little bit faster. So let's go one, two, three, so that it erases it from memory. One, two, and then let's just tap and see. So now I think they're both loading that same image. Very, very similar. So if there is an effective difference between the new type of file system i don't know i can't really see it in this example so i think that there the the gesture detection is a little bit better on the uh, node air for me at least and for my fingers it's a little bit better so now i'm gonna open up nord modular um i think i should have it here as well there we go. So this is a very, very heavy uh, document. It's because it's full, as you can see, it's loading up a lot. So this document is full of images and uh, text itself. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a relatively difficult document for readers to handle. So I'm just gonna try and get out of the hyperlinks here so that I can get to a page. So far with the hyperlinks, it's just behaving as expected. I really can't see any difference in performance. I don't know if you guys can. And we're both on normal mode. So let's switch to speed mode. Maybe that's something that makes it a bit different because then it just kind of forces everything as quickly as they can. No, I mean, to my eyes, this is, there we go, a little bit, but then again, maybe I was, no, it is, okay, so when we do have a bit of a heavier image, there, Note 3 is a little bit faster, so that's, here's an example of that slightly faster uh, loading time, so when the small images are there, the older system is not bogged down, but when we get to a combination of a lot of text and this, okay, he 
now loaded normally but there so there's some differences here and there nothing that i would say groundbreakingly huge but definitely yeah there are instances where the new uh, rom speed and the new interface is actually uh, better and it shines through on the note 3 so yeah it's a thing actually so I ran benchmark tests between uh, the old generation of the devices and the new generation. So the first test that I actually ran, because I don't have Note 2 anymore, but I do have my Nova 2 and I have a Nova 3. And those are the same platforms to actually run the synthetic benchmark and see what the difference or expected difference in performance is between the old CPU and RAM and the new CPU and RAM. And basically it's a, a bit of a mixed bag, but a little bit of an expected type of thing. So um, when I ran, you can see here, I ran Geekbench 5. And remember, these are just synthetic benchmarks. And I'll explain a little bit later what that means. The number that you see does not actually reflect, oh, bigger number, better performance. It's very, very much more complicated type of a situation than that. However, it's a good measure to see where the improvement and the efficiency is. So as you can see, uh, even though they are both multi-core, eight-core CPUs, the old Nova 2 single core performance that's something that's really important for our use case scenarios normal use case scenarios of the e-ink devices so the single core performance uh, was 170 on nova 2 and on nova 3 it's 254 even with lower uh, clock speeds it's actually far more efficient at executing operations and that's what I was talking about and it's performing way way better actually on the new platform so that's the new RAM and the new CPU on a single core way way better utilization now we have the multi-core performance where we have Nova 2 actually scoring higher than Nova 3 so 874 against 523 now this thing actually is a little bit more complicated than just a number because that test actually uh, branches down into subcategories of 2D, 3D performance and stuff like that that you will absolutely never need. And the advantage that you actually get on the Nova 2 is exactly there in the 3D performance. The situations that you will ever be in to actually utilize this uh, benefit on an e-ink device, it's, um, yeah, I think you're going to run into the limitations of the screen refreshing in the e-ink platform as, it's, as itself way, way before you are able to actually uh, perceive the difference between these two. When I did an OpenCL type of computing test uh, benchmark on the Nova 2 and Nova 3, I got really surprised because the uh, I didn't expect a no new platform to outperform the old one, but it did. So 159 on Nova 2 and 231 on Nova 3. And remember, it doesn't matter if it's Nova 2, Nova 3, Node 2, Node 3, they're exactly the same type of uh, platform here, or are they? So here's where things actually got interesting. So this was the baseline covered and I was kind of happy. Okay, newer is better, right? And then I wanted to actually test out the performance differences between the Note Air and the Note 3, uh, fully expecting only one type of result, which was exact same compute performance because they have the exact same CPU. Uh, Note Air has a little bit less RAM at three gigabytes. But one thing that I was expecting was storage uh, write and read speed to be faster on the Note 3. However, I started running into something very interesting for me. Even though Note Air and Note 3 are virtually identical platform as far as CPU and RAM goes, um, I'm not getting the same type of multi-threaded results. So you can see here that uh, this is Geekbench and then I repeat it on many different ones and you'll see these as well. So the single core performance is pretty much exactly the same, but Note Air is a little bit faster. Faster enough that it's not just a margin of error. So at 249 or 250, depending when I actually repeated it, Note 3 was hovering around 239 or 240. Um, but the multi-core performance is the one that's actually different. And the Note Air performs at 730, which is way closer to what Nova 2 had, if you remember. And the Note 3 has 492 multi-core score, which is basically uh, a little bit less than Nova 3 had. 
and I repeat it a couple of times and you get roughly similar types of results. Now, again, this is a synthetic benchmark, so I went on to examine where uh, the discrepancies are. And uh, yeah, the discrepancies are basically in the floating point score. You have a little bit better as far as single core performance goes. And um, yeah, then some of the processing like uh, all across the board there's a little bit of kind of differences but then again you get to the HDR for example in ray tracing and in HDR it's 234 versus on Note Air versus 134 on the Note 3 and ray tracing performance was 256 score on the uh, Note Air versus 55 on Note 3. So that's a drastic difference. And yeah, for example, image in painting 105 on Note Air, 63 on Note 3. Um, then yeah, and, and basically it just kind of goes like that. So it's either equal, Note 3 is either equal to the performance of uh, individual types, categories of performance of Note Air, or in some categories quite, quite drastically slower, which is very, very strange. And then we come to the multi-core performance, which really surprised me. And the one that actually surprises me quite a lot is the floating point score. Uh, Note Air totals at 960 and uh, note 3, it's 355. And this doesn't make sense to me at all because this is purely synthetic type of benchmark result. And these are supposed to be the same platform, same CPU, same RAM. It should be exactly the same with the exception that Note Air has a little bit less of RAM. So again, these types of differences in score are just interesting for geeks and nerds like me. They do not really reflect real world performance that much unless you're doing video processing, image processing, rendering and all that kinds of demanding stuff. So you will be very very hard pressed to notice these differences in real world use case scenarios on the Note 3 between Note 3 and Note Air. However, uh, for me, uh, from a geeky standpoint and in-depth in exploration standpoint, it's definitely interesting, especially when you compare the multi-core performance between HDR, for example, 2572 on uh, Note Air versus 863 on Note 3, and they're supposed to be the exact same uh, platform. So maybe the OS needs a little bit of tweaking and uh, updating to actually utilize all of this. I don't really know. Uh, however, that there is a little bit of a consistency here. So then I went ahead and did the OpenCL test on both of them. And here as well, Note Air outperformed Note 3 on the synthetic benchmark. Please do remember that. So we had 303 score versus 233. And that kind of didn't make sense to me because it was just like, what the hell is going on? And some things are really the same. Some things are very different. So I'm not sure. So then I moved on to the benchmark that actually I was looking for. This is the most important one, which is the uh, storage write and read speeds. And this is the one that you will feel the difference. So unlike the synthetic benchmark scores that I talked about, um, this score actually matters and this is one that you actually feel in your daily use. And because Note 3 uses the UFC 2.1 versus the EMMC standard that a Note 3 uses for the storage or ROM uh, handling, you actually directly see the benefit. So Note Air using this older standard is 2536 score while Note 3 is uh, 3896 or basically 3900. So quite a huge difference between the speed uh, uh, that you can see here. Then I went ahead and did a PC Mark uh, benchmark, which is a far more reliable, real-world kind of case benchmark. It's not a synthetic; it is synthetic, but it's not just pure synthetic scores in subcategories. And here it reflects exactly what I was saying: that those differences, that uh, or occurrences between different sub scores that you saw on Geekbench 5, for example, they really don't translate into real world almost at all but that uh, storage speed uh, write and read speed uh, advantage on Note 3 does translate so you have work wise basically work performance score on Note Air is 6205 versus 6299 on Note 3 so slight advantage because of that uh, storage speed write and read speed on the Note 3 goes in real world scenarios does go to the Note 3 
and then I ran the general performance test, another one, just to kind of equalize all the results because they were quite curious and interesting for me. And you get a similar type of results and something that actually makes sense. So CPU tests both on Note Air and um, uh, Note 3 and the memory tests on both of the devices are pretty much in line with the exactly the same results at 14,500 and something uh, for the CPU and 11,700, 11,600 between the two devices. So that's perfectly normal and that actually makes perfect sense. Then we have the advantage of Note 3 in read-write uh, uh, speeds where we have, for example, on Note Air 141 megabytes a second of read versus 196 megabytes a second on Note 3 and most importantly the write speed is 79.5 on uh, 79.5 megabytes a second on Note Air versus 127 megabytes per second on Note 3. So clear advantage and improvement of that UFC 2.1 standard on Note 3. And finally, then we have where the discrepancy is, which is the 2D and 3D graphics scores between these guys. And for some very strange reason, Note Air consistently outperforms Note 3 in 2D graphics and 3D graphics tests. And as you kind of imagine, that's completely irrelevant for the e-ink type of a, a tablet. But for me, geeky thing, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, you can see here that uh, Note Air scores in 2D graphics tests 9,723 versus 8,999. So more than margin of error, definitely outperforms Note 3. And in the 3D graphics test, it actually outperforms quite a bit at 10,500 versus 8, 8,670 something. So this kind of uh, final performance test kind of clarified the situation here that the core mathematical operations are exactly the same and the RAM uh, memory operations are exactly the same between the two devices. Note 3 has expectedly better read-write uh, storage performance, which is exactly the advantage that it has. That's what it's supposed to do. But the surprising part is the 2D, 3D performance between the two devices for some strange reason is different. Even though they're running the same system, the same Android, the same OS version, and the same CPU and same everything else, it should be the same, but for some reason it's not. So yeah, just please keep in mind that these numbers, as I said, the number advantage is only in the stuff that you're most likely never ever use on these devices. So it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and the clear advantage here is that yes, the performance are roughly the same, but you will get a bit of a read write advantage from the Note 3, which directly translates into loading images, saving files, loading files and all that kind of stuff. So definitely something to keep in mind and a bit of an advantage that Note 3 has over the Note Air. And of course, as everything else goes, it's exactly the same as on the Note Air. You have Bluetooth support, so you can hook up a keyboard if you want to see how that works. You can check out either the Max Lumi or the Note Air review. It works perfectly fine. It works exactly the same. Uh, the split screen works exactly the same. Uh, screencast exactly the same. Everything is pretty much exactly the same, including the USB OTG. So that was also tested and the results are exactly the same as on Note Air so I won't duplicate that. If you're interested, go check out that video and just pretend that you're looking at Note 3 and you'll have the exact same results. So it's the conclusion time of the books Note 3. And as usual, let's start with the cons. So um, there's a couple of cons and they're kind of regular cons that I've been now mentioning and I'll keep on mentioning them as long as they are not changed because I think that they need to be changed. They need to be changed for the class of the device that you have and for the price point. So the first one as usual and as tradition by now is the books pen. As long as this pen is included in uh, device is that demand this kind of price premium, this will be a con. It's bendy, it's squeaky, and the pressure sensitivity is not good enough. Plus, it's not mountable. We are entering an era where this is simply not good enough anymore. So for my taste, not good enough. The second con is a subjective type of thing, and this will bother some users, this will bo not bother some users. And that's the ergonomics of things that I've been talking about. I vastly prefer the ergonomics of the Note Air because the edges that you tend to hold the device by are equal.
equally rounded and smooth, which is not the case as I've shown earlier you know, on the Note 3. Now this is not so much of a problem on, for example, uh, Max Lumi, because it's far larger device and you tend to never keep it by the bottom edges uh, like this, because it's simply too large. Then you have Nova series or Nova 3 series, which is smaller and lighter and has a bit of a bigger curve. And then it actually hits that um, comfort line where it makes sense. The odd misfit for me was Note 2 and unfortunately the design is exactly the same and the same problem I do have with the Note 3 and that is that the combined size, weight and the profile and just the, the proportions of the device lead me to believe that I want to use it like this but when I do this kind of digs in a little bit too much into my palms so this kind of edge that's what I'm talking about that you have this nice rounded edge but then you have this step down and another step uh, onto the basically screen surface area and that's the one the, the the edges that you have here they're very nicely manufactured and everything is done very very nicely so there's no problems there it's just a personal preference and that's why I'm saying this is a subjective type of thing so some people may be bothered by this some people may not which is perfectly fine but i think it's uh, i fall, fall into the category where this actually does bother me and i vastly prefer the note air approach of things as far as this goes and note air is a heavier device but i don't have that problem uh despite the weight difference because the design and ergonomics and the materials are a little bit different so that's something that i prefer and it might be a case for some users that they should be aware of this now, now, I don't yet have a measurable uh, way to uh, measure the distance between the surface and the screen where you write, but every single thing that I've tested and tried indicates that that distance is for some reason appears to be higher on the Note 3 than it is on the Note Air. And I've tried and I examined the footage and I think that you can also see that the shadow that falls, I can't say with 100% certainty because I don't have a measurable way of confirming that. But my personal impression is that Note 3 does have a bigger gap between the, uh, a bigger distance between the writing nib and the surface where you write and then the Note Air does, for example. And that's something that I do notice. Um, however, they do really good software compensation as far as that goes so in normal writing conditions you hardly kind of notice it but it is a little bit more present than on the note air so that's something that i would classify as con and it was a con on note 2 um, it seems that, it, that it's present on Note 3 as well. As far as the design side of things goes, it seems that it's present. Then we get to the main difference, which is the screen itself. Um, the Note 3 is using the Mobius flexible screen and the Note Air is using the Carta HD screen. And you definitely see the difference. For me, at least the contrast and the image clarity, there's definitely enough difference to actually see it with the naked eye. And it, you, you can definitely compensate for that by increasing text contra, contrast uh, by a little bit or overall device contrast by a tiny little bit but uh, if I compare them on an equal footing um, yeah the the note 3 does have a slightly less crisper image and a slightly less uh, contrast of an image as far as the screen goes and that's something that books are openly even saying in their device when you're comparing these two and simply a difference on a technology so Mobius flexible screen is going to have these kind of properties versus Carta HD screen on Note Air. We also come when we're talking about the screen another con for me is the front light uniformity so it's not as uniform as it is on the Note Air and considering that we're talking about the very similarly priced devices and the Note 3 is more priced and it should be higher spec it's something that I definitely have to mention as a con because a lower spec than a cheaper device which is Note Air has better clarity and better front light than its higher kind of sibling so I think there's a bit of a discrepancy there however uh, those differences are minute as you've seen they're way too small to actually weigh your decision and uh, I really doubt that anyone should at all consider like oh i'm not buying note 3 because it has a slightly less uniform front light i mean come on that's just completely silly so my job is to objectively kind of dissect these guys and compare them so that it's fair towards all devices 
are these cons like the screen clarity and the front light are these kind of like deal breakers a absolutely not they are very very small differences but they are there so i need to mention them and while we're talking about the screen uh, there is also need to mention slightly uh, higher writing latency technically and i'm gonna go into that in a different uh, video because we're talking about also the difference between ppi uh, on max lumi 207 and versus 227 on node 3 so even though they're using the same type of mobius flexible screen you get higher writing latency on node 3 um, slightly compared to the max lumi now let me just explain it's basically the speed is pretty much the same it's just that the size and the resolution density is the thing that introduces this uh, discrepancy. So on Max Lumi, to actually cover the distance of one inch, the device needs to draw 207 pixels versus 227 pixels on the Note 3. So uh, the speed, I need to calculate these things, but I think and it seems that the speed difference is actually not there that technically speaking they're exactly the same display speeds but what we perceive because of the ppi differences have, and for effective use is slower latency if you know what i mean so um so while technically speaking they're probably at the same speed what i'm measuring is the real world use case scenario because we don't really have much use out of those technicalities they are kind of interesting but at the end of the day what you really are concerned about is uh, how far back is my line lagging why it's lagging it could be interesting but that's not the important part the important part is it lagging or is it not and as when i compare it like that there is a small difference in uh, uh, latency writing latency between max lumi and note 3 and that's also a very very small but a present con that should be mentioned uh, same thing as with the pen the screen protector if the uh, device produces deems that the screen protector is highly advisable and recommended to use then it needs to come pre-applied from the factory especially if it's prone to air bubbles and it means that inexperienced or experienced users alike will have difficulties applying that screen protector so as long as that's not solved that will be a con now this is just like a, a, a mentioning type of con it's not a real con because in real world situations you don't actually feel that but there is some strange performance difference between Note Air and the Note 3 which shouldn't be there because they are supposed to be the same platforms, right? So I'm simply mentioning this because you will never ever feel that uh, kind of difference unless you start gaming but, but then again the difference is going to be so small that the limitation of the display refresh speed is going to be the biggest problem so you, again you won't be able to notice it. So for, in for all intents and purposes this is something that you will never actually uh, feel uh, as a difference between the two devices but it is measurable and it is consistent and it is there so I'm simply mentioning it as an interesting point that is a little bit of a con side on the Note 3. And finally this is not a Note 3 kind of thing this is basically a general Android and in this case uh, books devices type of things. People are uh, kind of saying that oh it's too complicated and the learning curve is there so this is something that could be considered by some users a con but then again I think that's going to be a very uh, uh, time limited con and it might be just for the first two weeks but as soon as you start actually using the device and making it your own that con is very very quickly going to flip over into a pro because for me and for many users and I've seen now users actually uh, get a device and go like oh my god this is so difficult I can't do anything and then they allow a little bit of time and as they start using the device they discover like the possibilities flexibilities and everything else and something that starts it as a con very very quickly shifts into a pro but you should be aware of that the android platform and books devices do require of you some level of interest and to learn how to use it so it's not intended to be just pick up and play uh, you can certainly do it up to a point but if you want to do more advanced things you need to invest a little bit more of your time and if you do it will reward you so that's that shift from uh, android 10 and learning curve being a con and shifts very very quickly into a pro 
Now on to the pros. And the first pro absolutely has to be that Note 3 is the most powerful 10.3 inch e-ink tablet currently on the market. The second very, very meaningful and big pro uh, is that 64 gigabytes with the new UFS 2.1 standard. And that's something that's very, very measurable and something that affects your operations in daily life. From transferring files onto it directly via the USB or from it again via the USB to internal uh, operations how fast it opens a PDF how fast it opens or exports and saves and all these kinds of things so stuff that you'll be doing on a daily basis all of the time that's where you get the biggest advantage with the Note 3 and that new UFS uh, 2.1 standard definitely is way more dominant than the EMMC and you actually can feel it in the documents when they're opening images when it's combined like that and um, most definitely when transferring files to it I mean it's almost uh, it was almost as twice as fast in the example that I did so it was like seven seconds versus versus 13 seconds that that's a big deal so yeah the con that I talked about for me it's a pro Android 10 environment because when you do overcome and if you do invest the tiniest bit of effort and interest to actually uh, learn how to use the device which for me is should be a given um, yeah then you get to benefit the Android 10 environment which makes it current which makes it uh, yeah it should have a long life and all of these kinds of things so Android 10 environment is a really really big plus on the Note 3. Build quality, again, as I said, it's excellent. So everything fits perfectly and it just works as you would expect it to for that type of uh, price range. Um, the only problem here is that the Note Air is extremely built well and the design and the build quality is just a little bit better than this uh, for the same type of price range. But then again, this I think they are slightly different types of uh, uh, devices. And um, yeah, while I see the Note Air as the fun misfit one, and I see the Note 3 as the more suit and tie type of serious and elegant one. And in that type of context, uh, I think that the build quality and design, they really, really work. Uh, writing experience is slightly better despite the, the slightly slower latency that we have compared to Note Air you do have a little bit more friction and a little bit more sound uh, as far as the writing surface goes on the Note 3 however we do have that gap that's a little bit higher but then again you have that compensation from the software that compensates for that so it's a very tricky thing so i think that these two devices average out and then you can have as good of a writing experience on the note 3 as i have on the note air and generally speaking that's a very good writing experience so for me that's a pro then of course we have the incredible flexibility and versatility of the books platform neo reader neo browser the note taking devices and all of that kind of stuff it's just amazingly expandable versatile and flexible yes it requires that you learn how to use these things and how to slot it into your own workflow but that's a good thing i mean because you can customize it to your own needs so as you run into a, a, an obstacle oh i can't do this then you actually try and figure out and there's many different ways to solve pretty much almost everything that you may run into there are some things that are i hope that they will improve um, with the uh, um, with some of the sharing type of stuff especially with the documents in the library i think there's uh, room for improvement there but generally speaking everything else is absolutely fantastic and it's um, yeah the environment that i really really love and it translates again all of those positives translate onto the note 3 as well and then of course we also have the expandability via, via the Bluetooth so you can add your keyboard, you can add um, earbuds, you can add speakers if you want, bigger speakers or something like that and of course the USB OTG expandability of the storage uh, so yeah a lot of flexibility and versatility there as well. And finally unbelievable battery life I mean I expected it to be really really good but yeah these kind of tests show shown that it's uh, stuffing such a huge battery into this kind of device and upgrading it with much more power efficient components and circuitry inside yeah 
obviously you get a much better result but the result is basically uh, pretty much the best battery life that I've experienced on a 10.3 e-ink device so far. So what's the overall summary of the books Note 3? Well I think it's uh, for me it's relatively simple. If you are looking for the most powerful 10.3 inch e-ink tablet on the market today then Note 3 is definitely it. There's no question about it. The design is elegant and functional, build quality is excellent and it has one of the best battery life performance that I've seen on a 10.3 inch e-ink device so far. So if you're getting a Note 3 you can be absolutely certain that you won't be lacking for power, storage capacity or battery life or capabilities and flexibilities and efficiency. While the Note 3 wins most of the on paper specs and sheets and comparisons and all that kind of stuff when compared to Note Air, there is one category that it didn't win and that category is my heart. I think that it's a tremendously powerful device and I definitely respect that what it brings to the table of the e-ink world, right? But it simply isn't for me. It just doesn't do anything for me on that irrational side of things, inexplicable side of things. It's it's a purely subjective, there's no objectivity here at all. This is just me, myself and my own type of impression. I really respect it, I understand it deeply and all that kind of stuff, but I'm more than happy to actually go back to the Note Air and just doodle on and have fun with a device that actually speaks to me in a more playful type of way. So that's just a personal preference and I think a lot of people are going to feel the other way around. They will prefer and they will have that connection with the Note 3 while the Note Air will simply not be the one for them and that's perfectly fine. You're more than welcome to watch my in-depth review and the videos that I have for the Note Air as well and then try and compare and see which of the devices is better suited for your own needs and for your own more importantly personal subjective uh, preferences because I think it really comes down to that between the two, these two devices. But either way, whichever of these two you choose, I don't think that you can make a mistake uh, by choosing either one of them. It's just a matter of uh, personal preference and that's a great place to be in in a niche market like an e-ink world. That's a very, very cool thing to have. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. If you did, please like and subscribe because it really does help a lot. Also, if you like my work, do check out the other types of videos. I have tons of videos on the channel and everything is covered. So a lot of people are discovering it now and saying like, I can't believe I haven't discovered this before. And yeah, there's there's quite a lot of cool content on the My Deep Guide channel. So if you're new to the channel, stick around and explore and hopefully you'll find something uh, very very, very interesting. If you like what I do and if you like the My Deep Guy platform, consider becoming an official Patreon on patreon.com and uh, yeah, basically you'll not only you will you support the My Deep Guy platform and make it possible for me to focus more on this type of work and bring you better quality even still, um, but you also get a bit of an, uh, yeah, a couple of times a month you get videos such as behind the scenes and a little bit of vloggy, bloggy type of content etc. And for existing patrons, thank you so much. It really means a ton. All right, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!